Autism versus ADHD. What are the similarities and differences between autism and ADHD? Uh, in today's Patron's Choice video, um, I will be throwing some random information at you because that is the way that my morning has gone at the moment. I've basically cancelled everything else I've got today because I have energy for this video and you are going to see what a little bit of how my mind works around trying to explain some concepts and what I need to, to keep myself on track. You'll notice I'm speaking a bit quickly. It's because if I stop speaking, I'll probably forget what I'm saying. Back on track. What was I saying? So autism and ADHD. There's a lot of similarities between autism and ADHD. They're one of the most misdiagnosed, as in getting one, misdiagnosing one when it should have been the other, and also commonly occurring conditions where someone actually uh, has autism and ADHD at the same time. So clearly there's a lot of overlap, but there are also some very significant differences as well. So I'll be going through some of that today in as structured way as I can given the state this morning. So um, this, these notes are for me. Don't worry too much if you can't read them. Um, I just needed to write it out before I forget essentially. So uh, my name is Paul. I am um, from Asperger's from the inside. You may have seen the channel. Uh, I discovered I was on the spectrum about five years ago now. Um, so I am definitely have Asperger's, definitely do not have ADHD. Um, you might have seen my video yesterday where I took the ADHD test. So I'll be speaking from my own experience about autism, but I do not have ADHD. In fact, as you'll see later, some of my characteristics are the complete opposite of ADHD. Um, so if so, I've done my best to use the, the language and analogies that I've heard other people with ADHD actually use. But if you want to get to know more about autism or ADHD or anything else for that matter, my number one piece of advice is go out and meet not just one person, but, but many people with the condition um, and let them tell you what it actually means for them. Uh, however, if you're after resources, um, I've got a video um, explaining autism and my personal favorite uh, explanation of ADHD uh, is uh, from Jess from How to ADHD and it's called the Motivation Bridge uh, and it was the most helpful video that I've seen so far that helped me understand what ADHD actually is and why stimulant medication actually works. So that was, that was a really good one. Okay. I should have probably, you're probably not even watching anymore. Okay, that's okay, let's keep going. So the first thing to note is that the name ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, is probably the worst named thing in the entire medical profession. Um, attention, great, yes, it has something to do with attention. Deficit, yeah, no, not always. Hyperactive, no, not always. Disorder arguable, right? So the, the best way to understand ADHD is, is it's around attention, has very specifically to do with attention and regulation. Whereas understanding autism, um, it's a difference that can be in many, many, many different areas, attention being one of those areas. So how are they both the same? They are both a neurodevelopmental condition, meaning it's something to do with how our brains develop. Our brains develop differently. However, we, we both um, have issues regulating behavior and emotions, um, which results in social issues and especially being feeling misunderstood, being having our behavior misunderstood and um, getting labels like lazy or people thinking that we don't care or that we're weird um, and being told off for things that we don't actually control. So um, there's a lot of unhelpful stereotypes about both autism and ADHD. And one of them is that it affects young boys only, right? So adults, surprisingly enough, still have autism, still have ADHD. And also um, a lot of girls and women tend to fly under the radar as well and being underdiagnosed because it's not so well known and it's not as easy to pick up um, in girls and women. So one thing that um, puts us all together is that being normal is difficult. Our natural way of being is to do things in a certain way and to conform that to society and what we're expected to do is often really challenging slash impossible. And we'll get to that a little bit more later. 
Something else that we can all agree on is that you cannot be a little bit autistic any more than you can have a little bit of ADHD. All of the behaviors that I'm going to be talking about in this video, they're all human behaviors. We all do them from time to time, right? Have you ever lost your keys? Have you ever not felt like socializing? Have you ever been overwhelmed by a situation or stressed out by something? Of course you have, they're all human behaviors. And for most people, that's not a big problem. So how to understand autism and ADHD? It's less of an, a thing itself, like this is autism or this is ADHD, and it's more a deviation from the average neurotypical person. So let's, so if you have a neurotypical person, right, they will find some things easy and some things difficult. So let's take a really simple example, right? I'll use children because it's an easy thing that we can all relate to, right? As a kid, running around, playing with your friends is fun and easy and exciting. Sitting still at a desk doing homework is less stimulating, less interesting, and harder to do and less fun, usually. So if that's the case for every kid, or virtually, then for, for ADHD, those impulses are exaggerated, right? There is no middle ground. It's either no nothing or everything. So running around playing with your friends is really exciting and really fun and really stimulating, and it can be hard to stop doing that because it's so fun. And at the same time, sitting still, looking at a piece of paper, without the mental stimulation is really boring, really hard, to the point where it might physically be impossible to force yourself to do that, right? So one way of thinking about ADHD is that if you've got a neurotypical child, then all of the impulses are, ex are exaggerated and the ability to control them is, is um, reduced. Now, again, massive over oversimplification. I hope I haven't offended anyone. I'm just trying to be give it a sense, right? So how does autism differ from the neurotypical population? Well, with autism, all bets are off. Anything is possible. You might have a kid who doesn't like going outside and running around and playing with their friends. Some people don't like moving very much at all and would much prefer, you know, really firm pressure and to sit there and not actually have to move because movement is, a, is not a very fun, fun um, thing to do. Other kids will really love just spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning because they never get dizzy. Um, or maybe this particular kid loves doing their homework. All they want to do is sit down and read and do maths questions and know they don't want to talk to you and know they don't want to play. Anything is possible with autism. So in summary, you've got neurotypical, you've got ADHD where all of the normal impulses are souped up out of control. Uh, and then you've got autism where absolutely all bets are off and anything is possible. So this means that we tend, some of the things that we struggle with are the same, but a lot of the things that we struggle with are quite, are quite different. So again, when we're talking about ADHD, it's predominantly around attention and regulation and impulse control and things like that. One of the biggest differences is that ADHD has a medical, like physiological background that we know what is actually happening. Um, it's something to do with low dopamine in the brain or, or something like that, which means that you can actually, there is medication that helps um, regulate ADHD and regulate attention. Um, another thing with ADHD, and this is something I picked up from, from watching Jess's videos from How to ADHD, is that a lot of the time, the internal dialogue is, I really, I know what I want to do. I know what I need to do. I just can't do it. There's a huge thing over there. It's really hard. I really want it, but I can't do it because I just can't give myself the motivation. I know it's important. I just can't do it. Autism is, can be significantly different to that. Very often, we're confused and don't know what we're supposed to be doing in a social situation, for example. Um, it's, autism is characterized by anxiety, and a lot of the things that we do are centered around trying to feel better in an unsafe world, in a hostile world, and we just want to run away and make it feel better. Um, so a lot of autistic people have a huge ability to mask 
even young children have the ability to go to school and do everything they need to do at school and then they'll come home and they will crash. They will have a meltdown or a shutdown or just have no energy and crash because they've used up all of their energy trying to be normal and then they've got no energy at the end of the day. In contrast, ADHD is more characterized by an inability to do those things that you know you're expected to do. Now, be very careful here. Do not think that one is better than the other. One is, if, if you can't do something that someone is expecting you to do, right, then you might fail more publicly, but if you have to mask it all the time, then that is a crushing internal experience, and eventually you will no longer be able to take it anymore, and eventually that mask will fall off, and then you'll fail in a much more spectacular way. So very similar challenges due to being wired differently and having different things that motivate us. So one of the reasons that I'm doing this video today is because I started thinking about it yesterday. So I've started writing out what I'm going to do and I've started thinking about it and I'm getting really good ideas and I'm getting on a roll. And so I went to sleep and I woke up early this morning and my brain was still on that same thing. So for me, what autism looks like is when I'm on something, when I'm in the zone for something, it's really difficult to change and do something else. And at the same time, it's really easy to keep doing the same thing that I'm doing, to maintain a long, focused attention on one tiny little task and just keep going and keep going and keep going until it's done. So, so this is another way to understand um, a potential difference between autism and the ADHD. And that is around under and over regulation of our attention. So if a neurotypical brain right, has the ability to regulate their attention somewhere in the middle, right, I have the ability to concentrate, I have the ability to just let it go. ADHD is characterized by under regulation, difficulty regulating attention. Whereas um, autism for me is characterized by over regulation. Every bit of my attention is heavily regulated by my brain. You could say that my inhibitions are huge. It's really hard for me to get in the spirit of things, to, to go with the flow, to pick up of the emotions of the room and actually, you know, go with other people because it takes me a lot longer to do that. And I've actually got a, a video on what I call emotional damping um, where I, I still feel the same things, but it just takes longer for the feelings to, to kind of take over. So this, for me, means I have an absolutely huge starting inertia, right? To start a task is a huge amount of energy to start a task. To continue with a task is really easy. An analogy might be trying to power a freight train up a really steep hill. Getting there is hard, but once you're over the top and going, once, you're, once you've got the momentum going, the easiest thing to do is to just keep going. Whereas ADHD, what I've noticed from my friends is that a lot of people have a very, very low instigation energy. Oh, look, I've got an idea. I'm already doing it. Oh, I've already finished it. I'm already back. I'm already thinking something else. I'm already back. And me, I'm sitting here going, whoa, 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 I can't keep up. I need, I'm doing one thing. And if I'm going to switch to another idea, that is a huge amount of energy for me. I, I just can't switch between those two tasks. Now, interestingly, ADHD is also characterized, well, not characterized, but a, something that can happen with ADHD is, is hyperfocus in, in a similar way that autism can be, have hyperfocus. But in the ADHD case, it's less of a hyperfocus and more of a hyper distraction, hyper stimulation. I'm being constantly stimulated by this thing and therefore I'm stuck on it, like video games or something. Whereas with autism, because my regulation is so controlled, so over-regulated, I can focus my attention on something and block out the rest of the world so that I am doing just this one thing and I just do not notice anything else. So you can see that there's a bit of a subtle difference there. Now, here's the absolute clincher that makes it so confusing as to whether it's autism or ADHD or both. So I mentioned that neurotypical can regulate their attention. 
ADHD has trouble regulating their attention and my version of autism is an over-regulation. However, this end, this end of the attention regulation um, curve can be autism as well. Autism does not care which side of normal you fall. It's, it's, autism is characterized by too much or too little of a huge variety of things. So that might be, um, I talk too much or I talk too little, or I feel too much or I feel too little, or I'm too sensitive or I'm too undersensitive, or I'm too intelligent or I'm too not intelligent, right? All of those things are autism. Um, so to give you an example, if you're, um, you know, if a child is four years old and not talking, evidence for autism, click, right? Language delay. If a child is 18 months old and is going to their parents going, daddy, why are the other kids not talking to me? And you have to try and explain to an 18 month year old that your peers can't talk yet. That's why they're not talking to you, right? That's a significant social thing that makes it difficult to relate to your peers if you're not on the same level, either too far ahead or too far behind. So, Autism can be overregulation. Autism can also be underregulation, the same as ADHD. Um, now, depending on the degree of this underregulation or how and why it occurs, will depend if you meet the diagnostic criteria for ADHD or not. And I'll come back to that in some examples of memory and, uh, and executive function. Um, so. Let's take some examples, right? So let's take small talk. So it's possible that someone with autism and or ADHD might have difficulty with small talk. It's boring. Why do I do this? However, for, for ADHD, it's going to be more like this conversation is not stimulating enough for me. I'm really trying to pay attention, but it's so boring. I just can't keep listening to you. Can we please talk about something interesting? Um, because I, otherwise I just will not physically be able to keep my attention on this. I need more stimulation. Whereas for someone on the autism spectrum, it's more likely to be something like, what is the purpose of small talk? I have no idea what small talk is. I have no idea why you're even trying to small talk to me. This whole situation is confusing. Can we please just talk about something else? that's interesting. Surely that would be better for everyone concerned. So you can see that there's a bit of a, a lack of social, uh, a lack of acceptance and understanding of the social norms with the autism, whereas with the ADHD, the similar behavior is more driven by the need for stimulation, even if the social norms are understood. Uh, so another example, what about someone who talks too much? Have you ever met someone who gets really interested in something and just keeps talking at you and does not require any feedback from you, right? So again, um, for autism, this could be because of a lack of recognition of social cues, right? I'm talking at you and I think you're interested when you're not actually interested. Or maybe I get so focused on what I'm talking about because it's so interesting that I don't notice that you're trying to leave and I'm suddenly following you and it's a little bit creepy. Um, whereas again, for the um, on the ADHD side, think about the, the motivation being attention and, and the need for stimulation. So if I'm talking about, right, Right? ADHD, talking about something, and it's really interesting and stimulating to talk about it, it's easy to keep talking and, again, in a very similar way, not notice what else is going on. Um, similar thing. So executive function is another thing that can be a challenge for both autism and ADHD. Um, but again, what's happening behind the scenes might look very different. So if you get distracted, and forget about what you're supposed to be doing because something else has grabbed your attention, well, that's, that's an attention thing and that could potentially be ADHD. Whereas if, I, if the reason that I forget is because I don't have a reminder and nothing prompts me, then it's not so much that something took my attention away, it's that there was no reminder to make me think. I'm sitting here thinking, is there anything else I need to do and I come up with nothing because I didn't have the right prompt. So that's why things like visual schedules often work with autistic people. 
it might actually be that it's the format of the information that's the issue and it's not actually an impulse or attention problem. Do you have a bad memory? Are you forgetful? Or is it just the way that information is presented to you? For me, for example, I'm a pattern thinker, which means I need to have a piece of information in context with everything else and then I'll remember it forever. Whereas, if you just tell me something, then I'm unlikely to remember it. I also have a really good auditory memory. If you verbally tell me something, it's much easier for me to process and understand that information compared to if I have to read it or get it from some other method. Again, it, it's not an attention thing. I don't forget because I wasn't paying attention. I forget because the information didn't get through to me because of the processing of that information due to how I process information. So the last thing I'll talk about briefly is motivation, right? So the, the, the gap in motivation might potentially be quite different depending on what's going on underneath. So for example, with autism, especially this um, over-regulation over um, form of autism, I'm going to need to know why I'm doing something because it takes me a lot of energy to do something that I don't want to do. Like small talk, for example, why am I doing this? Is it better for me to just avoid the situation rather than have to spend all this energy? Or alternatively, maybe something is really difficult because of a, of a sensory processing thing or, or a, an information processing issue. Why would I read a hundred page document when I can listen to an audiobook? Instead, for ADHD, it's more likely that the person actually knows what they want to do and knows and understands, at least at an intellectual level, that it's important, but just can't physically, emotionally motivate themselves to actually do it. And in this case, right, so why would I sit down and do my homework? It's boring. Oh, colorful pencils, right? So you can kind of, trick yourself into giving motivation to overcome the emotional side of it if you already have the intellectual side and you know it's easy. Anyway, that's been a discussion on um, autism and ADHD. I've focused predominantly on the differences, but that's because there's so much overlap and our experiences are actually very similar in a lot of ways. Not least because if, if you get told off regularly for something that you can't control, like an inability to understand something or not sure what to do in a social situation or you're trying your hardest but it's just not good enough in this particular situation and you need to do it in a different way. Um, or alternatively, you do it in a different way but it's not a way that's socially acceptable but it's the way that it has to work for you then that's really challenging because people can't see, right? It's an invisible, for the most part, condition. No one can see how hard you're trying to pay attention. No one can see how hard you're trying to understand this situation or figure out what's going on socially. So from the outside, it looks very different from the inside. So I've tried to explain a little bit of multiple reasons for, for very similar behavior. Um, and I hope this has been helpful getting a sense of the difference between autism and ADHD. So thank you to our Patreon family for, for suggesting this video topic. Uh, if you'd like to support this channel financially, you can become a cup of coffee supporter of this channel for less than a dollar a week um, and have your say in next month's Patrons Choice video too. Uh, so, so check that out. Um, otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I, yeah, hope you see the difference between Asperger's and autism and ADHD and something. I'm sure there were more words, but I ran out of steam. Never mind. Bye.